Well, so now let's look at uh, the stories on the portal, majoronline.com. And we we'll have to start with uh, the new staff. Mm. Utility uh, price hike organized labor furious uh, wants PRC to reduce tariffs further. I mean, what is it? Reduce tariffs further. I mean, what does it mean? Mm. I think it's, it's gone if, up. Mm. If you say reduce further, it's as if it came down and you want it to further go down. Yeah. Are they just yes, going to be talking like they want them to? What do you want then? They should take guns and start killing. No, I haven't said so. But I think they are more powerful than perhaps they think they are. If it was salaries, they would have done something more. Mm. But the PRC has a representation of the P. Uh, the TUC yeah. has a representation on the Yeah, PRC. I think the argument is we've got only one person. I mean, what kind of voice has that person no, got? No, I don't think everybody's represented. The point is that we have representatives, and I don't think... There are more than 10 or 20 or whatever. Mm. But the PRC says that if any person is aggrieved, they mm. could come back to them mm. as a body. That's true. Yeah, so I, I think that's why I'm saying that they can do more than they are doing instead mm. of just talking. Otherwise, let's open up. Let's see exactly what, Fred, kindly open the story for us. Uh, let's see where the story is going. Are they just talking, you know, granting interviews and stating their positions? Mm. Or they are actually going to the PRC to, to make their case? So organized labor has waded into the fierce public condemnation of the recent upward review of utility tariffs, insisting the over 50% hike in water and electricity prices is wrong. According to the labor unions, following consultations with the regulator, the expectation was that the new tariffs would not exceed 50%, even though the utility companies proposed an increase of between 129 and 400%. Okay, so this is a court. We're also expected, uh, we also expected the implementation of any new tariffs to start next year. Okay, so now that we know their clear positions, it's not about the increments per se. Uh, they say it shouldn't have gone above 50%, and this should have started next year. So what would they do? Maybe we can take the conversation further. Uh, further, mm. yes. We'll discuss it. We'll try as much as possible to discuss it on the relevant segments we have on the mm. show. Uh, we have others as, as well. Um, two, Kwabla's mom calls mm. uh, John a beast and a rapist, wants Mahama, Ghanaian women support. Okay. This is turning out to be maybe mm. a movie, if you like. <laughs> I'm not sure where uh. this is going, but let's see how it, it ends. Mm. And then the next uh, ev evasive baptism and struggles of Muhammad's anti corruption instructions. And then we have the next story. UCL preview as wrong. It should have been changed by now by the managers of the website, majoronline.com. But don't worry. We'll get that word. Whatever. Them, Chelsea, too. People. Whatever. 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 And then we have okay. corruption. That's why you're about mentoring it. from Buhari GI. Yeah. According to GI, and then unhealthy lifestyles of men are written into their spam study mm -hmm. finds us for you know. Please open I've it up. I've noticed that the various research agencies in the West have researched everything, so now they are researching. <laughs> Yesterday, I was reading something in the Guardian. Was it in the Guardian? Yeah, <laughs> or is it a Telegraph? That or the Daily that, Mail? That says that the hands, handsome men don't get uh, career progression because uh, they are considered to be uh, threats at the job side. Yeah, it makes. Is uh, that real? It's not real to me. I, I think mean, the way I, you work hard and uh, you, you're good looking, if it, it helps you. Really? I should think so. I don't think so. I think if you if if it was the other way, then maybe I'll be thinking about it. But men handsome because your boss is a woman or what? No, we're talking about the research was about just good looking men uh -huh. from their peers, not necessarily from women, women bosses from their peers. They are seen to be threats because i mean when you know you are intelligent you have the okay. same the same intelligence quotient the mm -hmm. same iq levels but one is nice and one is not but it depends unless on the it's unless customer it, service no but, but unless you're but doing every job, sales or something every job now that you have to do customer service i mean unless services. you're going out every engineer is now into customer all, service because if you are going out often to look for clients then your boss will certainly push you mm. and you know that kind but the of point thing. is that even, even if you're an engineer you do presentations and and sometimes presentation is presentation you're going to do presentation mm. let's say to a multinational somewhere you're an engineer you don't come out you don't get to see people you're somewhere in the back room somewhere behind a machine uh, according to the research if you're handsome you don't tend to get a lot more progression because uh, you're 
your your boss or your 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 rivals seem to think that you could have a head start so they tend to push it down that's what the research said. i'm beginning to think that the research you know was conducted with people who have been disappointed somehow yeah, do you fancy so. nice looking guys no, uh, no you're fine by the way i am yeah well, but, but do you see like a fine guy when you see a fine guy do you notice the person no. is fine oh, no <laughs> not at all for me i think it's irrelevant uh, for a woman yes how you look it's it's important but your intelligence is is yeah is the most important thing. i agree it's I agree. the most important thing but for a woman if you're beautiful and you're also very intelligent it's a plus <laughs> let's read this scientists at the university of copenhagen now we know copenhagen is in uh, denmark good at the sperm uh, of obese and thin men and noticed uh, significant oh scientists at the university of copenhagen are the sperm doesn't make sense I okay think. maybe we shouldn't do it this after all wait no, i think we should try uh, Scientists at the University of Copenhagen, um, they looked at the sperm of obese and thin men and noticed significant differences in parts of the gene associated with appetite. Okay. Pregnant women and those hoping to conceive have long been warned to keep drinking and smoking and keep their weight down if they want to give birth to a healthy baby. And, but now a new study suggests that the unhealthy lifestyles of men are written into their sperm and could be passed on to their children. And so mm. it means that if you drink a lot, you, you're, you're, you engage in all sort of unhealthy lifestyles. It could also have some influence on the sperm that you tend to pass into mm. the woman. So when the sperm comes out and it, there's the mating, you know, Why are you doing this? Why are you, why, are you keeping it there? I don't know. What are you demonstrating? Okay, so enough of this research. If you're interested, kindly log on. Uh, and I, I said that you don't find the it. subject very nice. You have two. <laughs> no, <laughs> so but nice. I. I okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me know. Five. Fred, five. Okay, so we're moving on. <laughs> Fred. We're moving on. <laughs> Fred. Uh, oh, Fred. Okay, let's move on further. I think we've done this one. All right, so Africa joins global sitting action in demand for fair and ambitious Paris climate outcome. Really, that will be it for the stories that we're looking at here at myjoyonline.com. Let's quickly do City FM online, and the bus will certainly stop with the BBC, the Africa page. That's where our interest will be. So 125 MPs risk losing seats for absenteeism. Kindly click it for us so that we Can't can happen. check this. <laughs> Uh, it won't happen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why we do these stories. As media, we shouldn't even bother our minds. Really. So some 125 members of parliament risk uh, losing their seats for repeatedly absenting themselves beyond the limits, kindly move, the limits that the Constitution allows. Uh, Odiko, an advocacy platform that seeks to promote transparency, accountability, and democratic governance through citizen action and en engagement with relevant government agencies, has written to the Speaker of Parliament demanding that 125 seats be declared vacant because the occupants vacated their posts. Let's All go right. up, and these are, and these are the, let's mention, this is a report, it's not us. Go up, Fred, please. Okay, some of the names include MP for Dome Kwabinya, Adra Safo, Papa Wusuan Kuma, Second D, North Tong, and Deputy Education Minister Samoloku Jetu Ablakwa, MP for Bekwa, Joseph Osewu, oh really? Uh, in Joseph Osewu, in Itamale Central, and uh, we have um, Utu Senya MP Hanatete, Ibuakwa Sao, Samolata Chia, and Mark Wayongo. Uh, really? Navungo Central and Interior Minister. Okay, so we've got two MPs coming out, coming on our show today. We're just trying to check out if their names no, also none, feature no. here. So far. <laughs> so far. That's, we're going to have Ose uh, no, But Ose. this will be interesting, honestly. We'll, we'll, ask see. Him, we'll ask him whether, I think, I think he'll poo-poo this report, I'm telling you. <laughs> You'll rubbish the report. Okay, so we'll look at uh, other stories quickly. MPP to decide fate of the Japan crab today. Uh, already, there's this 15 month suspension uh, that would be either it's been affirmed, speculated. confirmed mm. today, or we'll it's see how it goes. I think it won't happen. And we've heard that uh, as for Sami Crab, yeah, his is going to be indefinite. <laughs> indefinite. Sami yeah. Crab. So we'll see what in. happens. What's why is in. <laughs> we'll see what happens. All eyes on the NPP definitely today. Uh, and Kolebu staff demand CEO's resignation. Hmm. Kolebu Teaching Hospital, who do you want to work with now? Everybody they bring, you've got issues with. So what should we do? Should we get the people in there? 
uh, to you know run the hospital. It looks like we're bringing people from outside, and they seem to have issues with them. And now a vote of no confidence. Yes, we need to privatize it. Yeah, that's true. Or we we give the management to a private entity to manage. Mm -hmm. They can better do a good job. But you know our concentration they, has the always been on civil management. Servants, civil servants. The, the concentration has been on management. What if the workers still have problems? Exactly. Yeah. It's something we all need to uh, ponder yeah. over, think about, mm -hmm. and feel that maybe there's something wrong with it. Okay, let's do BBC now, and then we'll make way ahead to say that Chelsea won, Manchester United, oh, I mean, Manchester was like the obvious team that to go through. Go away. Yeah, uh, that to go through, through the Champions the League, years, exactly. Yes. They were, actually, yeah. I also thought. I never imagined that Chelsea would qualify, but I think they did And well, they did it in great despite, style. Despite all the problems that they're having. Mm -hmm. So Tanzania, this is the precedent that a lot of people say the rest of Africa mm. should learn from. Tanzania's he just new president, no, he shouldn't. Uh, John Magafuli joins hundreds of residents in the main city of Dar es Salaam to take part in the public cleanup operation. He shouldn't change. I'm interested, and this is what I'm going to do, I'm interested in knowing what he was doing before he became president. Was he actively doing some of these things? Uh, then we can, you know, conclude that maybe, okay, this is just a show. But even if it's a show, I think he's doing well, because this is, you know, early stages where people would want to, uh, oh, what's the term, you know, get a lot of things, you know, properties and things like that. And he's interested in cleaning the country, getting the country clean. That's certainly a very good example. Uh, Africa highlights Ghana Cardinal on birth control, Rwanda third term vote, Raoul. If you're interested... Uh, you can, you know, take a look at the stories. Third Kenyan lion dies after poisoning. I can't believe it. This is BBC Africa page, and a lion dying is making headlines. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so much. Oh. I'm just saying. Mm. Mm. What? Charlie, BBC. And you have some comments. Oh, I've got lots of comments, uh, but I also do know that Benedict Sousa-Dankwa uh, is on standby, mm. so we're going to let him come and do the sports, the which man. a lot of people are waiting for. He puts on ties, neckties these days. He's trying. He's a good guy. Benedict is a good guy, one of the good guys I know mm. around. Yes, Benedict. very good guy. Mm. Benedict. We'll find him. If he's time. ready, let's call him. Benedict, are you ready? No, 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 no. no, no. Don't, don't do that to him. We'll come back with Benedict Sousa Dankwa. Uh, it's and, not yet ready. Okay, but, so let's read okay, some we're messages. Taking a break. By the time we take a break, when we come back, he'll be ready. Okay, let me read this. Uh, Mama V. <laughs> so this one says, you call Jan and Kobla uh, issue a movie. Well, a new series on telly uh, after the Justice D show. Greetings to you and your crew. It's from Danny in Akosombo. Danny, definitely, you've been following. Wahala Ghana, uh, who on, uh, on this earth can save the poor Canadians? I think only God himself can come down and help us solve the Dumso problem, the depreciation of the city, the tariff hike, and now being ranked second most corrupt country in Africa. Uh, Bambakia uh, Samed, your message is quite long. Uh, it's given us this message from, from Bese. <laughs> okay, yeah, from Bese. Uh, so Samuel Bambakia, thank you very much for your message, even though I couldn't read everything because I have to read. Uh, okay, this one says, good morning, Roland. Uh, hey, oh. Charlie, you send the message like, hey, <laughs> won't read. Okay, let me read a bit of it. It says, good morning, Roland. The December 3rd was International Day of People with Disability. Okay, we'll read. Uh, Samuel from Wali Wali, I think that's how he starts all his messages. Many ch uh, challenges facing PWDs, ranging from unemployment to a lack of access to public places, such as the Parliament of Ghana, the sports lift to a cross sports stadium, our market, schools, hospitals, and many other public places. I think you want us to focus on some of these issues. We get you. Mm. We appreciate your message. Thank Thank you very much. Uh, this one says, good morning, Roland and Mama V. Our friends in the NPP are doing very... Everything. Everything be. possible to make this government look bad. That's your opinion. You're certainly entitled to it. Clement from Bongo says, ha, ha, ha. Are you questioning Roland like that about the sperm explanation? <laughs> I didn't. I, I don't know. Was he demonstrating? That's all I was saying. I know what were you doing with all the, you know... Oh. Okay. Just saying. 
Uh, okay, so only the dose makes the poison. That's in quote. Even water can be poisonous if too much is consumed. Be mindful of the amount you take into your body. Good morning. It's from Dubik Stephen from Kentampo sending us that message. The very last one. Uh, Mama V, morning. I want to know when our good government will pay our arrears. I, okay, so that, that should be I'm a teacher. Mm. Okay. Uh, well, I wish I, I, I was mm, working. That's Stephen a free year. Mm. Stephen a free year bring us a moment. Okay. Uh, Stephen, uh, we'll try and contact the Minister of Education. And we'll see whether maybe you should give us more information. Mm. What district, what region, how much, uh, how much do they owe you? You know, and, things and, like and, that. And, and they have associations, so as, at least I know that they can speak to their leaders. You can speak to your leaders, and they can give you a lot more information on this very something. Just sometimes it's a bit baffling. Yeah, they have mm. problems, and they want to speak to the media the first time. Yeah. Mm. All right. So that will be it. We'll bring you more of your messages, more of the things that you're talking about on WhatsApp and on Facebook. But it's time for Benedict Ozadankwa to come with sports. Mm. Well, so that's why we have to take the break. When we take this very break, he'll be back with a lot more sports.